is it? It's a case for Nick Carter, master detective. Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters. The detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. The fact of the matter is, Mr. Carter, that I've quite accidentally stumbled upon evidence that a horrible murder has been committed. But, Mr. Field, why come to me? That sort of thing should be reported to the police. But to what police? Where was this murder committed? I don't know. Well, then how can you be sure there was a murder if you don't even know where it was done? That's what makes this particular crime different from any other. Somewhere, sometime, a woman has been brutally murdered. Yet I don't know when or where. As a matter of fact, I doubt if anyone in the world knows of it except those who did it and me. Really? Well, how does it happen that you alone know all this? Because the victim has told me so in her own words. I heard the horrible story from her own lips. Ah, then you talked to her. No, no, never. But you just said... But she has talked to me. See here, Mr. Field, are you trying... Mr. Carter, here's the story. About a month ago, at one of those sales of unclaimed packages that the express company holds twice a year, I I bought a box. uh, About uh, one-third the size of a steamer trunk. When I took it home and opened it, I found it contained a blood-stained dress, a photograph of a beautiful woman, and eight phonograph records. What kind of records? Well, they were the small record blanks you buy when you want to make your own recordings at home. And it was from these records that I learned about the crime. Hmm. Well, Mr. Field, if you've wanted to arouse my curiosity, you've certainly succeeded. How soon can I hear these records? Immediately. They're in my rooms. If you care to, we can go there right now. Excellent. Patsy? Yes, Nick? Get your hat. We're leaving at once to listen to a murder. That was the start of one of the strangest cases that ever came into the office of Nick Carter, Master Detective. A murder which came to light only because a man bought a box at an auction sale. Eight records which told the amazing story of the brutal killing of an innocent victim. Eight records of death. This is the box, Mr. Carter. How long ago did you say you bought it, Mr. Field? Oh, about a month ago. And the express company holds things for a year before selling, which means the murder's at least a year old. Were the wrappings on the box when you bought it? Yes, but I'm sorry to say they were destroyed before I knew they might give me a valuable clue to the mystery. Oh, too bad. You recall the name to which the box was addressed? Oh, yes, yes, I do. It was addressed to Alex Delanor, New York City, no street address. The rest of the label was obliterated. I have searched every city directory, every telephone book, every place where names are listed, but no such name anywhere. When are we going to get to the records, Nick? Right now, Patsy, I hope. How about it, Mr. Field? Uh, right away. I'm very curious to get your reaction to them. Are they numbered? No, but I've played them so often, I'm sure I have them in order. Uh, here's the first one. I don't suppose anyone will ever hear this record, but it's the only way I can think of to tell my terrible story to the outside world. I'm being held a prisoner in my own house. Held prisoner without any hope of rescue, except death. And I know that will be the end for me. All I ask of you who are listening is to avenge my death by putting my murderers where they belong. My name... She sounds as if she really meant it, doesn't she? I thought he was coming in then, but he didn't. My name is Nancy Deering. You will undoubtedly recognize it. As you know, I'm very rich, but all my money is no good to me now. I've tried to escape, but he keeps too close a watch on me. I only hope they don't kill me into... Oh... That's all on that. He apparently came back unexpectedly. She certainly had trouble getting her story on the record, didn't she? Yes, she was interrupted many times, generally in the wrong places. Oh, what a terrible feeling to expect to be killed any minute. Here's the next one. I don't know where I left off last time. I don't dare play it back. If they should ever hear what I'm trying to do, they'd take the machine away from me. From the way they talk, the end is very near. They may... I'm sure Ralph was listening outside the door, so I switched on the radio till he went away. Ralph is the one who will kill me when the time comes. Bad as Olive is, I don't believe she could kill her own cousin. But her husband is different. When I refused to sign the deed last night, he hit me several times. 
But he can't make me sign because I'm positive that would be the end of me. He can do anything he... Well, that's all there is on that. I wish she'd planned what she was going to say a little better. How to make head or tail of it this way. Well, she manages to get most of the story on the records, one way or another. The only thing she missed out on was telling us who she was or where she lived. All we have is her name. And she said she thought we'd recognize the name. Maybe she lived a long way from here. Maybe. Here's a third one. She apparently knew Ralph was coming to see her, and she prepared for his visit in advance. This is what she got. Come in. Well, my beautiful cousin, have you decided to sign that deed? I told you I'd never do it. Never. All we want, my cousin, is your money. As soon as you've made it over to us, we'll set you free, just as we promised. You don't fool me for one minute. The minute I put my name on that paper, you'd kill me. Set me free. That's funny. I haven't had a free minute since that cousin of mine moved into this house. I thought she was going to be company for me after Leonard died. But I'd have been better off living here alone. It was very sweet of you to invite her to come and live with you, Nancy. It was even nicer of you to let her bring me along. We've had such fun here. I wish I'd known then what I know now. <laughs> a little late to worry about that, dear cousin. Well, for the last time, will you sign No, me? no, no. Very well. But it won't be long before you wish you had. Oh, oh, oh I wish this were all over. I'd rather be dead than living like this. Not a friendly face anywhere since they got rid of my old servant. Nobody left but Alex. He's too busy with his rose bushes to know what's going on. Oh, I wish I were dead. And that's all there is on that one. Oh, the poor woman. But it's too bad she didn't use more of those records than she did. She only uses a small portion of each blank. It's probably hard enough to get as much as she did on the way she was watched. Nick, where do you suppose she got the blanks in the first place? Probably had a radio phonograph in the room where she was shut up. And must have had the record blanks in with the other records where they didn't notice them. I've never been able to make much of this next one. Maybe you'll have better luck. The whole first part is just scratch. Here, I'll start it where the voices begin. Nancy! What's the idea of voting? Nancy. Isn't she in here? Why, of course she is. Nancy, come out here. Hiding, is she? Well, we'll drag her out. I'll find her, the little Let's she look around devil. Here, little fool. Aha! Look there! Ah, come out of there! No, no, don't wait! Come Let me alone! Out of there, I tell you, will you? Come on! Oh, oh, no. uh, try to kill me, will you? And with my own gun. Oh. Too bad for you, you didn't succeed. You devil, why, Ralph? Doesn't... Not very clear, is it? I think so. Nancy locked her door and started the recorder. For some reason, she waited before saying anything. Then Ralph and Olive came to the door, found it bolted, and broke in. Nancy hid, and they dragged her out. She grabbed Ralph's gun and took a fast shot at him. It's too bad she missed. It's clear enough when you tell it. Well, here's the next one. I must hurry, as I may be interrupted any minute. They seldom leave me alone anymore. Maybe they're afraid I'll kill myself. But to get on with the story... When my husband was killed in Italy, I invited Olive, a distant cousin, to come and live with me. She asked if she could bring her husband. I foolishly consented. Everything went well for about two months. Then one after another, my servants left. I know now that Olive and Ralph drove them out. Then Ralph suggested that I put him in charge of my estate. I refused, of course. The next day, I was shut up in my rooms. He told me that when I made my fortune over to him, he'd let me go anywhere I wished. But I could tell he was lying. I knew... Someone is listening outside the door. Yesterday, I wrote a letter to Alex, the only one of my servants left, and threw it out the window. If he finds it, maybe he can... And that's that. Well, we didn't get much out of that except a few background details. Now oh, it all pieces together, Patsy. A little at a time. This next record is more interesting, you'll find. Good. Let's have it. Well, Nancy, how do you feel today? You're not interested, so why ask me? I'm extremely interested in the state of your health, always. If you had your way, I'd be dead. 
Now, why don't you stop being so stubborn, Nancy? It's not getting you anywhere. Why don't you stop torturing me? Or do you enjoy seeing me suffer? I don't particularly mind. Why, you... You she-devil! You ever throw anything at me again, I'll tie you hand and foot so you can't move. Why don't you kill me and be done with it? That's what you're going to do anyway. Why, Nancy. What an unpleasant thought for such a beautiful woman. You know, I could go for you. You'd only say the word. We... You dirty sneak! I told you that I fixed oh, you. No, you. No, I... Ralph, I... please. Oh. Next time I will kill you. Oh. I'm almost tempted to do it now. Ralph, will you get me a glass of water, please? I don't see why I should. Oh, all right. But no tricks, sir. I'll. Gosh, wish I could have heard more of that. I thought he was going to make a pass at her. You will hear more. Nancy must have known the record was about ended, so she sent Ralph after the water so that she could change the record. She's clever, that woman. Or should I say, she was clever. I'm afraid it's past tense for sure, Mr. Carter. What a terrible thing. Quiet, Patsy, please. Thank you, Ralph. I, uh, I think I should tell you, Nancy, that... Olive and I have decided that we'll give you one more day to do just as we want. Just one. Do you think death frightens me? That's the only way I'll ever get away from you two. At least that way my fortune will go to my sister and not to you two murderers. Are you sure? Of course. My will leaves everything to her. Ah, but we have a new will, leaving everything to us. What? Properly signed, sealed, and witnessed. No, you, you can't get away with it. Oh, yes, we can. Of course, we'd rather not have to use it, but if we must, we must... And I assure you, it's a masterpiece of fortune. I can't believe two such inhuman creatures as you and Olive actually exist. Well, we do. And we shall continue to exist long after you've gone. Look forward to tomorrow, Nancy, dear. You, you heard what he said. It was practically a full confession of everything. Oh, I beg you, whoever you are who may hear these words... See that those two monsters get their just desserts for what they've done to me. I should feel... Huh. If you didn't know she was in deadly earnest, you'd think she was putting on an act. Truth is generally more effective than fiction, Bessie. There's one more, the eighth and last. How she managed to get it, I'll never know. But here it is. The first two-thirds are blank. It starts about here. Keep away from me, both of you. As you see, I have a gun and you both know I can shoot. I'll kill the first one of you who comes near me. That's my gun. Where'd you get it? Olive gave it to me so I could defend myself. That's a lie and you know it. What if it is? Nancy. Ah! Give me that gun. Give me that gun, Nancy. Hey, give it to me. I can say you're wrong. Raise your wrist. Now, come on. Give it to me. Oh. Uh, well, that takes care of you, you stubborn fool. You all right, Olive? Uh, uh, yes, I... Uh, I guess so, Ralph. The bullet just grazed my head. Good. Is she dead? Uh, she's dead, all right. Even Nancy Deering can't live with a bullet through her heart. Well, I'm glad it's over at last. You, you say you've arranged with a doctor to... Oh, poor Nancy. What a tough break she got. I truly believe that's the most remarkably told murder story in the history of crime. Well, Mr. Carter, do you have any ideas? I think so. But I'm not ready to talk about them yet. What's your first step going to be, Nick? First, I want to take these records back to the office and play them over and over until I know them by heart. Then, I'll be ready to go to work. Got a sandwich in your pocket, Patsy? Oh, Nick, I thought you'd never finished listening to those records. I wanted to be sure I didn't miss anything that you'd possibly... Be helpful to me. Did you find anything worthwhile? Yes, indeed, Patsy. There are several clues plainly marked out for us. Certainly enough for us to get started, huh? Well, tell me, Nick. Don't keep me waiting. Of course, the most obvious clue we have is the blood-stained dress that came in the box with the records. You mean the label in it? Yes. We know the girl's name was Nancy Deering. That the dress was bought at Shipstead's dress shop in Albany. Uh-huh. And as the picture that was in the box had an Albany photographer's name on it, she must have lived in or near Albany. Right. So we'll start our search there. But, Nick... If it was all done as secretly as the records would seem to indicate, chances are that nobody up there knows anything about it. Yes, except for one thing, Patsy. 
It's obvious from the quality of the dress and from what she said in one of the records that Nancy Deering was a well-to-do woman. Uh And I find it difficult to believe that any rich woman can disappear without the newspapers or the police or somebody knowing something about it, even if they don't know there was any foul play connected with it. I see. And when they give you the facts as they have them, you can give them the inside story you got from the records. That's what I hope will happen. So pack your bag and order a taxi. We're flying to Albany immediately. lucky to be able to get us on this plane. Well, this business demands a certain amount of priority. Now, Patsy, here's what I plan to do. Hmm. As soon as we get there, you take the photograph to the address shown. See if it really is a picture of Nancy Deering, and also how recent it is. Uh Uh-huh. I'm going to the newspaper office and see what they can tell me. Meet me there. You're not going to the police first? No, not unless we can't find anything anywhere else. I want to keep this unofficial as long as I can. I think I'll get further that way. We've got to be careful. We don't know what we may be stirring up when we start asking questions. Huh? The chief's office? Oh, right over there. Thanks. Come in. Yes? What can I do for you? Mr. Brown, I'm Nick Carter. I hope you can give me some information. Oh, sure, Carter. Glad to help you if I can. What's on your mind? As the editor of a big paper, you must run into things every now and then. Would your files have any dope on a woman called Nancy Deering? What sort of dope are you looking for and why? I'd like particularly to know when and how she died. And I'd rather not tell you why just yet. Carter, I smell a story here. If I give you the information you want, I want that story... I don't know that there is any story, but in return for your help, I'll promise to give you first crack at anything I may find that's worth your attention. Okay. If that's the way you want it, I'll play along with you. Nancy Deering, you say? Yes. How and when she died. Well, Nancy Deering and her husband, Leonard Deering, were pretty prominent people here in town, so I can answer your question offhand. Deering, a colonel in the engineers, was killed in the big push through Italy. His wife died of pneumonia a little over a year ago. Pneumonia, huh? You're sure of that? I am, but I'll check it for you. Give me the morgue. Now, Bill, when did Nancy Deering die and what was the matter with her? I'll wait. Get the name of the attending physician, too, will you? Now, look here, Carter. You got any reason to think that... Yes? December 14th, 1944. Right. Pneumonia, yeah. Um, who was the doctor? Fred Windsor. Say... Wasn't he the guy whose license was taken away a while back for malpractice? Uh Uh-huh. I thought so. Well, okay, thanks. So this Fred Windsor was disqualified. Any idea where he is now? No. Uh, Wait a a minute. I'll have a look in the directory. Let's see. Yep. Here he is. Fred Windsor, 57 Telfer Road. That's up in the western section of the city, a small suburb. Thanks very much, Mr. Brown. I won't bother you anymore. And if I get any red-hot tips, I'll pass them on to you when I'm ready. I wish you'd tell me what this is all about. Later, Mr. Brown. Well, so long. Thanks again. So long. Oh, there you are. I was just coming to find you. What did you find out? The photographer says it's a picture of Nancy Deering, all right, taken about a year and a half ago, just before her husband left for the war. That's her husband with her in the picture. They had a big house out on Lincoln Avenue in the West End. Good. I found what I wanted, too. We going out to the Deering house now, Nick? Not just yet, Bessie. Huh? What she said in the records is true. The ones living there now, her murderers. They'd hardly be likely to tell us anything we'd want to know. Oh. No, we'll wait till we have more definite information before we tackle them. Then what do we do now? We're going to call on a doctor. Or rather, an ex-doctor. I hope he'll tell us something he never told anybody before. you're in, what do you want? And make it brief. Mr. Windsor, I'll come directly to the point. A little over a year ago, a woman named Nancy Deering died. You, as attending physician, signed the death warrant. All right? Yes, I signed it. What about it? I have reason to believe she didn't die of pneumonia. You're crazy. Of course she did. If you think you can come now, here and start a... I said I had reason to think she died of something else. I might have said I have proof that she did. Well, you haven't. Mr. Windsor, you'll save yourself and me a lot of trouble if you... Get out of here, both of you. They're a pair of metal Hold it, good Winter. For no... It won't help you any to get rough. I've got nothing to say to you. You might just as well get out. 
I'd like you to do just one thing for me before I go. I've got nothing to say. You won't have to talk. Just listen to a record. A record? Yes. You have a player here? Yes, right here. What's the record? Let me play it for you and you'll see. I can promise you, you'll be greatly interested. I'll go ahead and play it, but be quick about it. Put it on, Patsy. You mean the last one of the series? Yes. Okay. Keep away from me, both of you. No. Oh. As you see, I have a gun. You both know I can shoot. I'll kill the first one of you who comes near me. That's my gun. Where'd you get it? Oh, that's right. Oh, gave it to me so I could defend myself. That's a lie and you know it. What if it is? It can't be possible. <laughs> What do you think of? That takes care of you, you no. stubborn fool. Stop it. You Stop it. I, I won't hear anymore. I won't hear anymore. Quinton. 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 Nick, did he... Did he... Yes. Right through the temple. Oh, what a tragedy. But he practically confessed before he died. But we can't prove he did, Patsy. No matter how much we know ourselves, we're right back where we started, as far as legal proof goes. Then we'll have to find some other way to prove what we know. We can't stop here. I have no intention of stopping. Well, what now? I'm going to put an ad in the paper for Alex Delano, the man who sent the box to New York originally. He isn't listed in the city directory or the phone book, so we'll have to try it this way. Wouldn't that be dangerous, Nick? How do you mean, dangerous? Well, suppose this Ralph should see it. Mightn't he get suspicious? That's one reason I'm using the ad, Patsy. I hope Ralph does see it, and I hope he does something about it. I want to smoke him right out into the open. And this may be one way to do it. Pardon me, do you uh, have any answers in box 415? 415. Uh, yeah, one. Here you are. Well, results. What is it, Nick? Let me get it open and I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, from Alex himself. Oh. We'll be looking for you at my residence at 84 Green Court about 8 tonight. Alex Delanoir. You going, Nick? Of course I'm going. But you're going to stay in your hotel oh. room and wait for me to call if I need your help. Oh, Nick, I want to go too. Nothing doing, Patsy. As you yourself said, this may be a trap, and I'd rather deal with it myself. Who is it? You, Alex Delanoir? Yes. May I come in? I'd like some information, if you can give it to me. Oh, but of course. Come in. Thanks. Uh, sit there, please. Delano, you used to work for Mrs. Nancy Deering, didn't you? Oh, Mrs. Deering. Oh, yes, I worked for her for many years. It was only after she died that Mr. Morgan fired me. Uh, Mr. Morgan. Yes, yes. Tell me, Delano, after she died, did you pack up a box of records and send them to New York? Oh, you have found the records? Oh, I've waited so long for that. Yes, we found them. And why did you send him to New York like that? Well, her letter asked me to, to prove she was murdered. Her letter? Yes. It says she is being kept prisoner, and she is afraid she will be killed at any time. She says if she die quick, I must pack the records I find in her radio cabinet and take them to the police. It will prove what she say. But why didn't you go to the police with that letter? Uh, she have died the day before I find the letter. It is too late. She throw the letter out of the window to me a few days before... But I find it behind a rose bush, too late to help. So I, I do what she said. And you didn't take the records to the police? Oh, me, uh, I am afraid of police. Hmm. So I put them in a box and send box to New York. And then I write police to get it and find out what have happened. Do you have her letter now? Oh, yes, I, I keep it in my pocket always. Here it is. Thank you, Delano. With that letter and the records, I'll I think I... will take that letter, Mr. What? Carter. No, I have a gun here covering you. Put your hands up over your head. That's it. So it was you who arranged this meeting. Yeah, I was curious to know what you wanted with Alex. And I find he knows much more than I thought he did. I should have got rid of him before this. And what do you intend to do now? Dispose of you and Alex. The records are still in existence. They'll prove you murdered Mrs. Deering. With this letter in my possession and the doctor dead? Oh, yes, I know about that, too. The records will prove nothing. Now, come on, I have my car outside. You and Alex and I'll take a ride to my house where you'll stay until I decide how best to get rid of you. Say, kill him, Ralph. He's too dangerous to be allowed to live. Well, do as I say, Oliver. 
If Carter were to disappear, every cop in this section of the country would be searching for him. But, Ralph, No, he... we'll clean out the safe deposit boxes, withdraw the money we have in the bank, and go to Mexico, South America. We'll leave Carter and Alex tied up there. If they starve to death before they're found, well, that's just too bad. I think you're a fool, Ralph, to let him live. I'm running this, Olive. And if you don't want me to go away alone, do as I say. I hate him. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have to run away like this. I could kill him myself. Well, you won't. I don't leave the house until I get back. Pack all your things, be ready to leave. All right, Ralph. I'll get back as quick as I can. Let him live. I won't. I'll fix him. A knife in his heart is what he deserves. That's what he's going to get right now. Yes. Yes, this carving knife will do. Tied up as he is, he, he can't do anything to stop me from killing him. Are you in there, Mr. Nick Carter? I'm coming to kill you, Nick Carter. I hate you. I'm going to... Now, now, if I can reach that knife you dropped. Oh, if I can only see behind my back. What happened, Mr. Carter? I tripped her up as she came in and knocked her head on the floor and stunned her. Now, if I can get to that knife... Now, where is it? I want to be... Now, cut the ropes on my arms. There. Now, have you free in a minute, too, Alex? Oh, look out, Mr. Carter. She's coming, too. It's all right. I'm free now. I'll take care of her. What? What happened? Quiet. Don't make a sound. But I... You try to cry out, I'll fix you so you can't. Ralph isn't here anyway. Wouldn't do any good. Where is he? He's gone to town. Olive. You're lying to me. Olive. That's he calling. He must have come, ba come back for something. Alden, why don't you answer me? Call to him. Tell him to come in here. That you don't think my ropes are tight enough. I won't do it. Ouch! That's the carving knife you feel between your ribs. Now call to him. Carefully. Ralph. Yes? Ralph, I'm in here. Please come in. Well, what are you doing in there? Get I your hands you in the air. Why, what? Get him up high. That's it. Alden. How did Carter get that gun? Did you? You overlooked this little pistol I always carry in my shoulder holster, Ralph, but it's deadly even if it is small. What? What are you going to do with us now? Round up whatever existence I can find in this house, including Alex's letter, and hand you both over to the police. With what Alex and I can tell them and the evidence I can turn over to them, you'll both of you pay for Nancy Deering's life by forfeiting your own. <laughs> How about a few hints about next week's show? Well, next week, Ken, I'm going to tell you about a suicide that turned out to be a murder and then disappeared entirely. Hold on a minute now. That's too fast for me. Well, it's true, Ken. If it hadn't been that my woman's intuition told me that what Scubby and I saw wasn't what we ought to have seen, the entire story might have been different. Yes, Patsy, that was one time when you really put the finger on the answer to a very tricky problem. This I gotta hear. What do you call it, Nick? I call it the case of the disappearing corpse. <laughs> Carter, Master Detective, which is produced and directed by Jock McGregor, is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Pictured stories of Nick Carter appear in every issue of the Shadow Comics magazine. In the adventures of Nick Carter, Master Detective, Lon Clark is starred as Nick, Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy, original music is played by George Wright, script is by Jock McGregor. Any resemblance in these programs to actual persons, living or dead, or to actual places, is purely coincidental. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented over most of these stations each week at this same time. This is Ken Powell saying so long until next week. Mutual.